to be talking about the episode The Other Woman, Season 2, Episode 2. So welcome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you joining me. Thank you so much. No problem. So what did you think about this episode? I think it was... I think, um, particularly because it was early in the season, it was definitely a great lead-in for other um, twists and turns that happen later on in the season, mm -hmm. um, especially in terms of Fitz and Olivia's relationship, um, Quinn and Huck's relationship. It, watching this episode again, I realized that this was the first episode where you really see Quinn and Huck's relationship begin to develop. So it's not so far-fetched to see them on this killer rampage later on, right? Because yeah. they're, they're starting to develop um, a codependent relationship, I would say, but also uh, a trusting and authentic relationship, which she doesn't seem to have with any other members of OPA. Go ahead. And also, um, it was the first episode when I really sat back and realized that everyone within Olivia Pope and Associates seems to have a codependent relationship because they're all uh, they're all that they have and that was the first time that I really paid attention to how they interact how they're intertwined um, how their relationships have developed and how Olivia has kind of been a white knight for all of them so they're all really dependent on one another because they don't have anyone else I like that. See, I was going to tell you, I was going to pull a Courtney because Courtney said on one of the episodes, she was just like, I flat out didn't like it. I'm like, how do you go on somebody's show and just say that, you know? And then now I'm like, I do not like this episode. I'm feeling like her for this. Like, I did not see all the elements that you saw, which mm -hmm. is great. This is why I love doing these panels because... Um, you get to see a different perspective that you didn't have necessarily, yeah. and you're actually allowing that perspective to also be voiced aside mm -hmm. from your own, even if it defers. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I did, I did like what you explained, and now I can say, okay, the episode wasn't that bad. Right. <laughs> but before I was just like, mm -mm. <laughs> I don't see it for it. It's not for me. But understandable. I like the codependent relationship concept that you were mm -hmm. talking about because you are right and it does tie into the fact that now that Steven's gone and I believe my personal opinion that Olivia's relationship her closest relationship was really with Steven and right that codependency now that he's gone she doesn't have that anymore and it's like she's just running off the rails and Absolutely. that whole season two just really kind of shown showed her running off the rails and taking everybody with her for the ride. She's the conductor in the front mm -hmm. and everybody else is behind her and she's just taking them off script, off the rails. Absolutely. And I like that. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense because it connects to what Abby said in episode one where she was like, see, um, Steven's gone and mm -hmm. she's just losing it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was pretty much her, her concept of it. Um, I think that there were three great moments in this episode, as there are with most episodes. And w I know what mine were. What were yours? Um, the three that, that especially stood out to me was definitely the scene between um, the Reverend's wife and Melly. What? Yes, that was awesome. It was... It, and and to see that and and see the parallels between that and Olivia's conversation with the Reverend's mistress, I think those yes. were both two very powerful moments. Um, and of course, I I think the the scene between Quinn and her father and the shunning of Quinn by her father that she's mm -hmm. you know she wants to sacrifice all of this. Um, all of her safety basically to return to Oakland to see her father and for him to shun her was uh, I think very compelling and showed how much she really does need Olivia and Huck and everyone. And then also um, just seeing I, I'd never realized that Huck showed up so early in that. I, I don't know why I thought that he never why he didn't come to Oakland to get her but that was when I was like, okay, that's when the when the light clicked on. Like, okay, I can see how now she's developed this murderous impulse because now she's developing a a really close relationship with Huck. Like, she confided in him. 
Yeah, and I think that was that was really important for me. And you know, it's strange because our one of ours is the exact same, the scene with Melly and Nancy. And mm -hmm. I actually love that scene because I think that it humanizes Melly a little bit more. Very much so. And nobody mm -hmm. thinks that Melly loves Fitz. And I'm just like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, I, I think it's this episode where... No, it's the next episode. I'm not going to talk about it then. <laughs> I mix them up because I watch two a week, and yeah. I just be like, "Yeah, girl, yeah. Blah, blah. I'm like, wait a minute, did that happen this episode?" But, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, I love that scene because it showed that she's saying, you know, he may sleep with another woman, he may um, allow mm -hmm. himself to be tempted away from you for a, a second or years. <laughs> right, but you're right. his wife and he's committed to you, even though it's not necessarily true because I kind of feel like, I kind of feel like Fitz is just not committed to Melly and Absolutely the love not. that she has for him, he has none for her. Like, mm -hmm. I think he respects the fact that she came with him all this way, but he was never in love with her and the circumstances of their marriage would never allow them to be in love. And Mm -hmm. I think that saddens her, but she has to be a hard ass so that it kind of pushes him and motivates him and also um, show that she's still willing to be in it with him. Mm -hmm. That's my thought, but I don't know. Other people don't I, agree. I, I agree. I think, too, that this was the first time that, as you said, we saw Melly humanize because in the first season she was portrayed as uh, the wife that nobody wants. And she has all of these awful <laughs> characteristics and nobody wants a wife like that, you know. And this is the first time that you really see that she really does love Fitz. I don't think the love that she has for Fitz is at all um, comparable to the love that Olivia has for Fitz because yeah. they have a different type of relationship, uh, whereas it's mutually beneficial for uh, Fitz and Melly to have a relationship. I mean, he is the president. We we tend to forget that he's the president of the United States on the show, but he, he really is like the him. president at all. But <laughs> you know that that I think this was the episode when you really begin to understand Melly's perspective. Even though she does plenty of awful things, um, you really start to understand that she does love Fitz, and their relationship is more than just a political arrangement for her. Yeah, and then yeah. when you um, were talking about um, Olivia talking to the mistress, and I mm. cannot for the life of me remember her name. Like, I can't I was either. Like, I need to go back and write her name down and just like, let me just call her mistress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when when Olivia was talking to her, I call those Fitzpiffanies because she mm. tends to have in almost every episode an uh, epiphany about her relationship with Fitz, mm -hmm. and that epiphany leads to her being like, okay, this is what the situation is, and you know, and she's talking to herself, but she's mm -hmm. actually talking to the person. So she applies it to the person, but it's actually something you can tell she's thought about with her relationship with Fitz. So that's what I think. I think that mm -hmm. she has Fitz Piffanies in the middle of each episode, <laughs> yeah. and she goes off into this little, you know, world of where the world according to her life with Fitz, but applies it to the case or the scenario that mm -hmm. she's actually dealing with with OPA, which is so crazy because I guess you do kind of relate your relationship to everything around you when mm -hmm. you are in that relationship or even mm -hmm. if you're not in it and you're just like, I love him. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> having yeah. that kind of love yeah. for somebody else. Um, I liked when Huck gave the details about how to dispose the good reverend. Yeah, Olivia that was, was also like, interesting. Excuse yeah, me? No. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to hack him up and, you know, I just, just want you to get him to his house. <laughs> That's all I yeah, need you to do. Because yeah. that kind of plays into later on when she asks him, are you okay? You know he ain't okay. You know exactly he, what you did to him. Yeah, he hasn't been okay in many, many, many years. <laughs> I really feel like she pushed him off the cliff when she asked him to find a man to tanner. And I mm -hmm. am not here for it. I'm so mad at her with that. And then when um, Nancy pulls the mistress and her son out of the pew at the end of the episode into the aisle to say that final goodbye to um, Reverend Drake, I thought that was pretty neat because, you know, it was Nancy very was powerful. Like, that was pretty neat. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, she she's like, you know, this is his kid. 
he had a separate life, and I don't want this chick around, but mm -hmm. <sighs> gotta be Christian. That's the Christian way. Yeah, <laughs> like she, yeah. She showed yeah. her her Christianity with that. I thought that was mm -hmm. pretty nice. Um, and what else? Oh, we already talked about the scene with Melly. So, was the case for this episode compelling to you, and why? I think the case was very compelling. When I originally saw the episode, I remember thinking, what does this have to do with anything that's going to tie in later? But mm -hmm. I think it was compelling, one, because there was a mistress. And so there was that element of relatability between Olivia and the mistress, whose name I don't know. Um, <laughs> the nameless one. <laughs> yeah, the nameless mistress. But also, it, it was... For me, the first time that I was able to see oh, what Olivia is enduring, right? Because mm -hmm. she's always so poised and, and put together, and you don't really see her in a human light very often uh, either, particularly in the first season. It was very she's rare. She's a paragon. Yeah. Yeah. She, she was very robotic and, you know, I'm here to do this job, and I'm here to fix this, and I'm here to solve this. But this was the first time that, that I really thought – when she was having the conversation with the mistress, like, wow, she she's affected by what she doesn't get from Fitz either. She doesn't get Christmases and holidays and and anniversary trips because one, he's the president, and two, you're the mistress. So yeah. she doesn't she doesn't have that aspect either. So I think that this case was especially compelling because it was able to humanize Melly and humanize Olivia at the same time. So you don't get this. Are you a, are you uh, for Melly or you for Olivia, it's really a element of you can relate to both of them in their situations, and that causes mm -hmm. the the uh, moral dilemma. Because for me, it definitely causes a moral dilemma. I every episode, I'm just like, like I think when I first watched it, because my homeboy, um, a guy, turned me on a scandal. <laughs> wow. He was like, you need to watch this show. I'm like, eh, whatever. And then I, <laughs> I had like Blockbuster at the time. And so I got the back episodes, like the first mm -hmm. season. And I kind of jumped in in the middle of second season, not even in the middle. I think around the next episode I jumped in because I saw the trail first. And um, no, yeah. That was last episode. Oh, God. Whatever. So <laughs> so um, I jumped in at the beginning of season two, and I was just like, oh, I was all Team Olivia. I did not like Melly. I thought she yeah. was an inconvenience. Mm -hmm. I thought she was annoying, almost as annoying as Abby. But, <laughs> <laughs> but now that I'm watching it again and I see the nuances and the way her face reacts to certain things and how things affect her, and she's just like, you know, I just really want, like, because this is not, she's told him to get rid of Olivia. She's told Olivia to leave him alone. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? A mm -hmm. wife that doesn't care and that's just about political agenda. Because initially I thought, okay, well, she's fine with the relationship because as we see as viewers, she was just like, okay, you need her, whatever, whatever. But when she found mm -hmm. that Olivia, she felt more betrayed, I think, about the Amanda Tanner situation than Olivia did. To Absolutely. Me. Because when you look at her face and, and the reaction that she had, and then even when she tells Olivia, you let that girl get in his pants. You know, you mm -hmm. did not play on the team. So now she's just like, you're not a team player, and I'm not here for you. Like, right, right. <laughs> I don't want you nowhere around my husband because clearly you are not here for the team. So I think, too, I, I think too with that, I think Melly had come to accept that Fitz loves Olivia and this is more than just a sexual thing. Yes. So she she had accepted Olivia, but Amanda in addition to Olivia was too much. Like yeah. okay, I, I can accept Olivia. You know, I, I it hurts me. I'm I'm hurt by the fact that you're cheating and that you're in love with another woman. But I've come to accept that because it mm -hmm. keeps you focused. You're doing what you're supposed to do. You're leading a country. I can support that. But when you have extra floozies on the side <laughs> Okay. Okay. Fitz. That served that's no enough. purpose. Right. That no. That's too I much. I kind of wonder if he cheated before. I I think about that too. I wonder if you know the, they paint Olivia as a you know a special woman in his life, but were there other women? I think about that, particularly with Amanda Tanner. Yes. How many other Amanda Tanners were there? Yeah. And I wonder about that a lot. I'm like, yeah. hmm, if he could, you know, do that with. And it's so arbitrary. Like, how could you, you're in love with this woman, you have a wife that you can get available access to vagina, 
Why right. did you go <laughs> sleep with this random girl for what what was that about? Like if you needed a quick mm-hmm. nut Olivia would not have done it, but your wife would have. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I think Fitz is a I think Fat Fitz is a power tripper too. You know, he's he's he he's an egomaniac, which I wow. you get to see later. You get to see it later on. I think he he enjoys being in power. Um, oh. based on the way that he treats Olivia, the fact oh. that oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> you know, just just uh, based yeah. on based on how he interacts with women. Olivia and his wife, and when you think about that in relation to how he interacts with his father, he's definitely 100% an egomaniac. So I think it's more for him about being in power and and having these women who are willing to do whatever for him because he's the president. I think it's more of that for him than just, okay, I need I need to have sex and she's available. It's more like I'm the president and I'm going to do what I want to do because I'm the president. That's what rapists get off on, though. Power. Also true. <laughs> so, yeah. So you say I'm like, <laughs> no, Fitz is no rapist. Yeah, he's not a rapist. They just, he's like, hi, I'm Fr- Fitz No Brows Grant. <laughs> Their panties just go pew pew pew. Yeah, yeah. Off. I already know that Katrina's gonna get me for calling him No Brows Grant, but <laughs> I think it's hilarious. Um, so okay. If blank would have done blank in this episode, it would have been perfect. Your thoughts? Uh oh. Yvette, you're frozen. If, oh, <laughs> there I you are. Business. I didn't even hear any of that. You were frozen. I was hey, like, oh. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, sorry. Sorry. If David if David Rosen had minded his business, the episode would have been perfect. You think so? Because that's when you, yeah, that's when you start to see the unraveling of David, and it, just reliving that, I was like, if only he knows what's gonna happen to him in future episodes. <laughs> you don't know, <laughs> David. Don't just, go down that road. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it, David. If he would have just took his leave of absence and and you know didn't develop this, I need to know everything that's happening attitude. You know, it it would have saved him a lot of grief. <laughs> I actually think that that made the episode more interesting because you know, if David didn't start to unravel, then we would not have had such a good season. Like also true. <laughs> yeah, also true. So I love the fact that he was just like, I'm not letting this go. I wear a hat. It's white. You know? it's yeah. Like, Dude, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. yeah. I like the phone call where he was telling Olivia because I honestly feel like if Olivia hadn't called David, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. what did you call him for? You already yeah. knew he was not in your corner anymore at this point because you screwed him on a major case. That is so publicly humiliating right. as a lawyer. So why would you? And he's the DA. Why? <laughs> why would you think you should call him to help? to find this woman's husband that is absolutely retarded right and then and then not to um and then try to cover up what happened to when you do find the husband to attempt to cover it up and to convince david that it's worth covering up no no (laughs) he already knows you did something wrong and that's how um quinn got off yeah so i don't know just my thing i just think that if she had just not call David, this yeah. would be great. <laughs> yeah, also true. So Scandal has become an incredible phenomenon with all the social media aspects of it. What about it keeps you coming back for more? Uh, I think the fact that it's so fast-paced and it's so full of twists and turns and you never know what's going to happen next. There's so many unforeseen twists that you, you never know what's happening next. So I've developed this I don't blink when scandal is on (laughs) mentality, you know, Um, I think it's that. And also um, that if you miss one episode of scandal, you're thrown off. Yes. So I know that I've actually built it into my schedule. I know that I have to, I cannot have a a graduate course during this time. I cannot write, you know, I have to, I have to, you know, if you miss one episode and also, I, I think the whole viewing experience, particularly with Twitter, 
Yes. Where it feels like you're in a big living room of, of friends and family and you're sitting around eating popcorn and, and tossing around commentary about the show. That yes. makes it entertaining as well. And so I don't like to miss that aspect. So I want to watch it when it's happening. I don't want to have to watch it later and, and miss the whole commentary and the interaction that comes along with Scandal. You know what I like about that? I actually... Um watch it. I, I DVR all of the episodes, so mm -hmm. <laughs> I watch it while it's on, and then um, you know, I'm tweeting and all this stuff. Did you see that? Blah, blah, blah. You know, so yeah, on yeah. my phone tweeting and stuff, but also when I finish tweeting, I actually go back and watch it again. Mm -hmm. because a lot of the stuff that I, the nuances that you miss because you're live tweeting while the show is yeah. on, you yeah. don't get until you actually sit and watch it. And like mm -hmm. nobody call me. I know I have to go to work in the morning. <laughs> right. That's right. literally where I'm at. I was just like, oh my god, I gotta watch this, and I'm so tired by ten o'clock. <laughs> I'm, I'm, my brain is probably half shut down while I'm watching Scandal, but I absolutely love mm -hmm. the interaction. You actually care about the characters, mm -hmm. and that lends that lends itself to caring about the actual people who play mm -hmm. the characters. So I see the fandom of Scandal as just like you said, a family. It's almost mm -hmm. like you sit there and you watch and you talk about it and, you know, um, I was there for the brows that Kronos just put on Fitz for <laughs> on Tumblr. <laughs> Hilarious. I laughed so hard. I tried to um, to tweet it to yeah. somebody else, but it only gave me one of the brows. I'm like, ah, I want all the brows. He had, <laughs> she created him with some fire brows. That thing oh. was hilarious. I'm like, Kronos is ridiculous. <laughs> She makes all these gifs, so it was hilarious. But um, I love it. So you're absolutely right. I totally agree with you. Who was your favorite character this episode? Uh, Melly, surprisingly. Whoa, Melly was, really? was my favorite character. Um, I, I really loved the scene between she and Fitz in the, in the car. And I loved her interaction with the reverend's wife. Mm -hmm. And even um, just... Her, the fact that her that she was in the same room with Olivia and, and she was able to be civil, that you know, I was like, okay, a plus one for Melly. She was absolutely my favorite character. I know uh, the eyebrow episode. raise. You know, she was like, yeah, I need the room. And yeah. then Olivia stood there. She was like, hey, you, you, <laughs> <laughs> like you too. Goodbye. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love that. My favorite character was actually the mistress because while really? she was yes, like. Think about what she had just went through. My hair is everywhere. I'm trying to <laughs> get it out my face. Okay, so think about what she went through. Her mm -hmm. lover of 15 plus years had just died on top of her. Almost right. like a scene out of the color purple. The color purple. Yeah. <laughs> when he died on top of me, you know, it was yeah, like, oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so not only had her lover just died on top of her, but she got out of there. And even though Olivia commiserated with her, she was still not on her side. You know what I'm saying? So she was like, you have nothing. When she sat there, it was like, you have nothing. Uh, blah, 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 blah. She was like, son? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't he look like his father? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, I guess that was my favorite quote, actually. It was like, um, he's the spitting image of his father. I'm sorry. What were you saying? <laughs> yeah. Hilarious. So I thought that was cool. I love the way she stood her ground because even though mm -hmm. she was a mistress, she was also a woman who that man loved. Because if mm -hmm. he didn't love her, he would not have been with her for 15 years. He would not they have wouldn't have a child. Have a child. Yeah. yeah. And, and I thought that that was amazing that she stood her ground not only for herself, but also for her son's heritage and inheritance. Mm -hmm. Because like um, the wife, Nancy, her kids have everything, mm -hmm. and he was just getting the leftovers. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So you can, at the end, imagine how, because Nancy, it kind of flip flop for me, because at the end, I was like, Nancy, you go, girl. You know, <laughs> like how, I don't understand if, it just gave me the feeling mm -hmm. that yeah. Nancy kind of took it to another level and invited this woman into their life, because they have mutual children by the same man. You know, like, that's where you can imagine it going at the end. Right. So I did like the mistress, though, because mm -hmm. I think that she really just stood her ground and was like, I'm not backing down. This is where I'm at. And I don't I don't agree with the whole mistress idea, but mm. if the man loved the woman, hey, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Who's your least favorite yeah. character this episode? 
Quinn. I, you know, Quinn, <laughs> Quinn was my least favorite character, but because I, I, I think that she, she's, I don't know, she's so defiant, and she just wants oh, answers. Oh, she was and nasty. I just, yeah, you? I just want to know. Like, I just want to know what happened, and she's just. Everything, every attempt that you know Olivia and and her associates are attempting to protect Quinn, mm -hmm. and every step that they're making to protect her, she's taking two steps forward without them, and it's just so aggravating. I believe Quinn aggravated me for many many episodes this, <laughs> this season, <laughs> but but well, particularly Quinn is your Abby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. You know what's crazy about that when she was talking to Olivia on her couch. I looked at that girl <laughs> like I'm. It's almost like I'm in this in the show, right? I'm like, I'd have been in her face, like you know what? <laughs> Just right, do right. your life, and if you don't shut your mouth and lay on this damn couch, <laughs> it's gonna be a right. different situation. Cause she was just so disrespectful, and mm -hmm. I'm like. She's like, oh, just lay on the couch, extra pillows. I don't want to lay on the couch. I'm like, who are you? I just saved your life twice. Right, right. Do not play with me, little girl. <laughs> yeah, she, over that. she just seems so ungrateful and so... Yes, defiant, just like you said. Like yeah. going out to Oakland, who, who told you to do that? Like, what, what right. you you could have called your daddy and gotten that kind of response. You didn't have to go right. all the way out there to see that. But it also allowed her to realize that Lindsay Dwyer is dead. Like when when um Huck told her um eight people died in that bomb, not just seven. Mm -hmm. And she, mm -hmm. you know, let that go. Oh, I love the way she snapped on Abby at the end. Oh, but that wasn't this episode, yeah. so I'm not going <laughs> to. <laughs> um, my least favorite character was Fitz. Mm. It really was Fitz because he just ah, ah. he said to her um, to Olivia, "What do you want me to do, Liv? Tell me that you want me to do, and I'll do it." What? <laughs> I was like, "You are the man. Get your balls out of her purse and let's move on." Right. With it. Like he right. just did not. He did not. He never shows to me any type of. I don't know. I just think he allows people to bat him about. He's been my not favorite for a couple episodes here. So mm -hmm. yeah, this episode it was Fitz. Oh. Sorry, Fitz the Pooh, but <laughs> it was you. What is? What are the two best quotes from this episode for you? Uh, the two best for me um, have to be when Fitz and, and Olivia had their first conversation or second conversation and he said, tell me to stop calling, tell me you don't want to hear from me. Mm. And, and he continued in that monologue, uh, but then called her again. So clearly, no, that didn't pan out. And also, <laughs> I really loved the, the ending scene between uh, um, Cyrus and his, and, and his husband where he said, I already have a baby and his name is Fitzgerald Grant. I <laughs> love that. I Cyrus love that. is such a snarky. He's <laughs> awful. Cyrus is awful, but I can't. I love him. As a I guy. love Cyrus. I really do. I don't know why I like Cyrus so much, but I really do. And these episodes that I've watched just highlight that for me. Like, girl, you love you some Cyrus. Yeah. Based on this episode, what predictions do you have for season three? I, Which is I, coming soon. Yeah. I know, really soon. <laughs> I think. I really think that that. Uh, Melly, that Melly's presence in in Fitz's life will be like a stabilizing anchor for him. Um, I think he's going to begin to really lean on her, not just out of necessity, but out of love. Um, I think he's going to find comfort in her, particularly as we know <laughs> what happens in, you know, in the last episode of the season, but I, of season two. But I, I really think that he's going to start leaning on her much more than we expect him to. I kind of feel like Melly is a pillar of sand. Mm. And the only reason I say that is because when he starts to lean on her, she shifts. And she mm. does it every single time. And I think that's kind of why he can't love her back the way he wants to and mm. why he thinks loyalty is so important because um, when Olivia betrayed him, that really took him out. You know what I mean? Like in season two, yeah. when he found out about defiance and everything, he felt 
totally betrayed. And I understand why, because Melly is such a pillar of sand. Like he can't mm -hmm. depend on her. He can't lean on her because her interests always come before his own. Like right. they usually come before his own. And what she feels is the best interest of the country usually always comes before his own desire or his own mm -hmm. intel. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't I don't know. I don't see him leaning on her like that. Only Probably for a couple episodes, but not for the whole season. Because she's going to do know. something. She's going to do something. She always does. <laughs> she's going to do true. something. She also always true. does it. I, I don't um, know. I don't know. I think, I mean, everything's going to crumble, I think, in this season for Fitz. I really see that happening. And so he's going to need something. And, and you know, Melly loves the, the power trip. <laughs> she loves when she's right and Fitz is wrong and this is, I think this is going to be the season where you really see that dynamic play out. I think the only stable person in his life is Hollis Doyle. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. Absolutely. Hollis knows what he wants and he is, mm -hmm. you know, taking yeah. pains to get what he wants. And you know Hollis is run by money. That's pretty much his whole shtick. So... Yep. There's <laughs> if it's money behind it, Hollis is on it. I, Absolutely. I don't know. Absolutely. What do you think will happen with the OPA team? I I really hope that they introduce a new associate this season. I know that's strange, um, because we're so comfortable with who we have, but I'd love to see them add a new dynamic to their team. And I also I think um I think that Harrison it, we're really going to get some of Harrison's backstory, fingers crossed, um, this season. Um, and I think that they're going to have to, as Olivia's personal life is crumbling, start to um, kind of elect a new leader. And I think that leader will be Harrison. I think he will kind of take the reins as Olivia tries to, to piece herself together. He'll take the reins of OPA. Do you think that Olivia already kind of elected him as leader by giving him all the files and information he's going to need to keep OPA running and moving? I think so. And I think, too, um, he's, he's the one person within OPA outside of Olivia that everyone respects. Mm -hmm. And that every, I mean, of course, he and Abby have their, their points of contention, but even she has a, a high level of respect for him. Not to the degree they have for Olivia, but close. Yeah. So I think he's Abby, I think it's as close as it's gonna get because Abby even she's like, What are we doing that for? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> she's yeah. Kind of a follow blindly type of chick. So mm -hmm. and I think that the relationship that they have is the codependent one too. Like so mm -hmm. Harrison and Abby kind of go back and forth. But I think Harrison's loyalty is always gonna be to Olivia. So Regardless of the group dynamic, his loyalty is firmly affixed. And if he has to throw Abby under a bus and roll over her twice, he will do so. Absolutely. <laughs> like, Absolutely. He will do that. Yeah. Um, Governor Reston knows about the election now. So he knows he's really the president, even though mm -hmm. he has no evidence. So what do you think will happen with that situation? I, my prediction is that Reston will attempt to run against Fitz again. And if he doesn't secure the nomination, he's going to reveal what he knows about defiance. And either they're going to kill him, which is, you know, always a good possibility on scandal. <laughs> People come up <laughs> missing. But they're either going to kill him or they're going to discredit him in some way. They're going to have some dirt on him that we don't know about yet. And they're going to uh, discredit him and, and make him seem like he's a little loony, I think. That that sounds about right when it comes to OPA. Aside from Reston, who do you think will also try to run against Fitz? I I don't know if Sally is gonna if she's gonna toss herself in the ring. I I don't know. Um, I think given everything that's happened, she may not. But I think if Fitz runs again, he probably won't pick her as his vice president. I think we're also gonna get a new. Uh, a new politician figure in this in this season because you know that Fitz is coming up for re-election and all that good stuff. So I think that that we're going to get 
some new political figure that we're not expecting. Since we found that Jake is now a permanent part of the cast, what do you think will happen with his character for season three? I don't know. That's one of the loose ends that I, I really don't know with him. What what could possibly happen or what comes next? I really don't know. Because he he was always a tool for someone else. So yes. he was always being deployed by Fitz or being uh, shunned by Olivia. So he I, I really don't know a lot about his character within himself. So I don't know. I don't know what other what other things can be thrown out about him or, you know, a twist or a turn that you're not expecting. I, so I really don't know. Charlie's actually also a tool. What do you think about his character? Because he's clearly not going anywhere. Right. I, I think Charlie is going to present some issues for Huck this season. I don't know how. I don't know how that, that's going to play out. But I think that we're really going to see Huck in a in a battle for his life, I think, this season. Because now they know he's alive, and they know that, you know, he's working with Olivia. And that's just a, no, something's going to happen. And we're going to find out this season. Do you think Jake and Fitz have a deeper history than just um, the Navy buddy story? Because remember how Cy was talking about the possibility of, Oh, no, he was saying, oh, I know some things happen, blah, blah, blah. And we know that Jake is somebody that um, Fitz trusted when he thought he could trust nobody else. So mm -hmm. do you think that they have a deeper history? I think we, so. We're being led to believe. <laughs> I think so. I, 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 it sounds a little strange, but I think Fitz has a history also with uh, B613 in some <laughs> form or fashion. I don't know what it is. He may not have been an agent for them. He may not have gone on killing sprees, but, you know, uh, we do know he has a murderous impulse. But I, I, I don't know. I, I think there's a history there. I don't know what it is, but I think he has some, some history with B613 that we don't know yet. I mean, you got to think about it, though. If somebody gets you shot in the head, it is only fair for you to, you know, smother them with a pillow, choke them out, whatever. I'm also, just true. also true. Also <laughs> true. Also true. So, uh, is there any final thing that you have for the audience um, about your thoughts from this episode for the upcoming season? Where can they find you on Thursday nights? Um, I I don't know. This this was one of the better. I mean, we've only had two seasons, but I really enjoyed season two a lot more than season one, only because you really get to see these characters develop. Um. Season three, I hope we see a lot more of Harrison. I really love Harrison. And I hope that he really gets his own storyline. <laughs> and we get to, you know, we know everybody's backstory. I want to know his too. Um, as far as Thursday nights, I'm on Twitter at Yvette Dion, D-I-O-N-N-E. -N -N -E. um, and I'm also uh, on Facebook as well, Yvette Dion Writer. And people can shoot me an email if they would like to, Yvette Dion Writer at gmail.com. And we could talk all things scandal. I love scandal. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. No problem. Thank you.